check out the gunkage. That's some sewer pipe action. That is the before. That's the after. Oh, that is smooth. Scorpion. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to save this one or not. Wow. Wow. It's another day here at Freeman's Garage and we are back working on the abandoned 1962 AMC Rambler. Working towards putting it back on the road for the first time since 1975. The license plates prove it. We are rebuilding the wheel cylinders, front and rear. They're two different sizes, so there's different kits for the front and rear. And we might as well uh, clean and repack our original wheel bearings while we're at it. We'll start with rebuilding the wheel cylinders on the back of the Rambler first because up at the front there's something kind of cool I want to show you. So I want to save that for last. Got to build that suspense, you know. We got the weight of the car resting on our 1970s Sears jack stands. But we're gonna keep the jack underneath just in case we go kersnappy. So come on in here and look. We've had the drums off this car in a previous video, so it's no surprise that pretty much everything behind the brake drum is gorgeous. E everything's wonderful just the way it was parked in 1975. Brake shoes are good. All the springs are here. We've got tons of dead scorpions back in here. Hopefully none are alive and bite us today. But the wheel cylinders are the one uh, deal here that we're taking care of. The rubber boots on the outside of the wheel cylinders on this car are rotted and I'm sure the seals inside on the inside of the pistons are shot as well. And the plan with this car is to actually drive it for real and put a lot of miles on it and have a lot of fun with it. So we would be taking these wheel cylinders off to clean them out and put them back together anyways so we might as rebuild might as well rebuild them because the rebuild kits are just a few bucks the brake drums on this car are in very good shape as well i mean these are good to go they just need to be cleaned out and these are tiny little nine inch drums i'm hoping that we can get the wheel cylinder out without this axle flange interfering there's a brake line on the back we're going to take off, two bolts, and then we got to pop these springs off. And we've got these push pins or center link pins in here that'll come out. And it looks like the spreader bar for the parking brake is in the wrong spot. Should it be there? Shouldn't it be up here? I can see a little surface rust line like it's been down here for a long time. When we get to the passenger side, we'll see where the spreader bar is and we'll we'll figure out <laughs> we'll figure out where it's supposed to go. Let's start with the brake line. Tight fit. I just have this fear that this brake line is just going to snap off, but we're probably going to bend by hand bend all new brake lines for this car. Anyways, 
since in the previous video we broke one up at the master cylinder. All right, we got a 3 8 line wrench on. Ooh, really? Now, is that the brake line just twisting or did it actually loosen? Yeah. Well, the brake line was rusted to the fitting, but it just broke free. Pretty swanky, huh? Just working it back and forth to break it loose. Or maybe I turned it in the wrong direction, but I just made that up to act like I didn't. Alright, I think it's a 7 16 back here. Ow! My daughter was grinding and welding in here earlier be today before I brought the car in to do this and there's metal shavings all over the all over the floor I guess we have to have, have to have a talk about cleaning up but she's young she's just learning all right the first bolt broke free. Ooh, the second one broke free. Nice. Either broke free or snapped in half. Well, it, feel, it feels like a broke free. Yeah, in a good way. It doesn't feel like it snapped in half. There you go. A tiny little bolt. Tiny little bolts. Okay. So the wheel cylinder is now free. just came loose. The only thing we have holding us in now is these push pins. No more bolts or brake line back there. And we are loose. Loose as a goose. See it's these push pins holding us in but let's pop these springs off and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that when we pop these springs off we'll be able to spread the shoes enough to where we can just pull out the wheel cylinder because all of it well and reposition that if the spreader bar into that spot if we need to that might be where it's supposed to go I'm not sure it's you know it's every day you work on Chevy's and Ford's and that stuff but Ramblers you don't work on every day most people right so it's kinda I don't have every little thing behind the brake drum on these cars uh, memorized, but I'd rather not. I'd, I'd rather not mess with anything because it's all real nice and it doesn't need to be messed with. So, all right, let's pop these springs off. I like to put things back exactly how I found them. So the spring on the front is on the outside. Spring on the back is on the inside. We will remember that. Oh, I think I'm kind of snagged on two springs there. Okay. Come on off, sweetheart. Come on. Oh, you little. Okay. Oh. Ho, 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 you little. Oh, false alarm. I thought it was too far back there, too deep for the the tool to be able to reach it. Well, it is giving us some trouble, but there you go. This is the shoe guide plate. Well, that's what General Motors calls it. Not sure about AMC. Okay. Can we wiggle out? And we can. I think. Please. <laughs> please. Please don't be stuck in here. We're just going to add on a, a lot more time onto uh, something that's very simple. Alright. No scorpion bite me. No scorpion bite me. Aha! Got it. 
You see what I was saying about this spreader bar here? I don't think it was supposed to be on here. Pretty sure it's supposed to be up here, which we could get it in there. But I'm not going to do that yet. I want to wait until we've got the drum off on the passenger side and we'll, we'll compare. Made in USA. You're gosh darn right it was made in USA. Look at how big and bold and proud that is. But there's time to get sentimental later. Let's get this to the bench, clean it up, and see what our first wheel cylinder really looks like on the inside. And once we get a rhythm, you know, once we get this corner here done, then the other side, we, we can get done a lot faster. It'll be faster for me doing it and faster for you watching it. And then up at the front, we do kind of a repeat, but we're going to have the ball bearings to inspect and that neat thing I want to show you, which is going to be cool. We are over here at the wheel cylinder repair department at Freeman's Garage. Let's get a good look at what we're going to be working with here. I think this is going to be a pretty easy rebuild. I hope we'll see when we start pressing out the pistons and the seals. We'll see how much trouble that gives us. But from the outside looking, well, we can't really look in right now, but from the outside, it just looks like it's going to be probably... Get out of here, spider. Might be a fairly easy one. Made in USA. P4. Do we have a part number? I want to get an idea of how old these are. We know 75 or older. EIS. Okay. EIS 541. I've seen this exact wheel cylinder on Studebakers before. This wheel cylinder would fit many other makes and models, but EIS, that's a company, that's a brake parts company that was started in the 30s, and they were making mostly hydraulic hoses and couplings and that kind of stuff. Sometime in the 80s, I want to say 19... I think it was 1986. They were bought by Standard, which makes all kinds of automotive parts. They were bought by them, and then in the 90s, they were still doing their thing, but I'm not uh, quite sure. Somebody probably, you know, it's probably been bought and sold a million times. Who knows? You know what, Spider? I thought I told you. Can you get injected with venom after a spider's been dead for 40 years? There's the piston. That's what our, that push pin or center link, if you will, pushes on that. You got a piston and then you've got a seal and then you have a spring and then a seal and a piston. Let's get some lubrication action going on here. Take the bleeder off, spray some in there. Just fill that puppy up. Oh yeah, just fill it. We need all the lube we can get. Now I am the king at pressing things out in fashions that you should never attempt. And we could put this in the big uh, 20 ton press. This big boy over here, but we're gonna start small because we do not want to crack this cast wheel cylinder. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to crack the actual wheel cylinder itself here. So we'll start small with this. If we need to, we'll bump up to that. I am gonna borrow one piece from this kit and we're going very gentilly lace here. You never know, it might move really easily. The last thing we want to do is just go Rambo on it right out the gate, you know, when we don't need to. Fits in there pretty nice. Just, just want to see if we get any movement.
didn't feel anything there. Hmm. And I took it apart just to make sure that we're not ramming the end of this clamp or or da damaging the piston because we're going to be reusing the piston. All right. Oh, I th something moved. I think. Yes, the piston moved. Let's get some more lubrication in here because what we don't want to do is dig deep grooves into the inside here in our cylinder because then that's, uh, well, we might, well, we might do some real bad damage to it. We are going to be honing the inside of these cylinders. So we want to start with the nicest, cleanest bore that we can because we want to get a good, nice, clean cross hatching going on in there. Kind of like a, kind of like a cylinder that a piston in an engine rides up and down in. I'll bring you in a little closer to the action here. So I am pushing this into the piston here and it fits almost perfect in there. I'm just making sure I'm not damaging anything. And it did move, it did push that way, so it's compressing the spring in here. And the idea is that it's going to push and pop the other piston out on this end. Now, it looks like, well, okay, we have that end in here, but it should be able to come, or come out this end far enough to loosen up Obviously, it can't pop all the way through because we have that in the way, but I think it can come out far enough to where it'll be loose to pull out. And if it doesn't work, I've got another trick, another way of doing it. When we get the guts of our wheel cylinder out, oops, things are a little buttery here. I will tell you what size this bore is and all that good stuff. And the part numbers for these wheel cylinder repair kits and which work for many, many more vehicles than just this Rambler. We'll get into that when we get to that point. Those part numbers and some of the tools used here today is all going to be listed and linked in the video description so that way if you need anything I've knocked out all the legwork for you and it's all right there to help you get your car back on the road just like I'm trying to do and if you don't need any parts you're not working on any cars you never have or you don't anymore that's perfectly fine too Freeman's garage is for everybody. And we need to go a little bit. We need to go more. Because we're definitely pushing that piston down further. But we haven't pushed out on this end. Actually, here, let's do this little trick. Let's flip it around. And we're going to push from the other way as well. Because maybe it's maybe it's a little stuck. We'll try to make sure this ends loose as well. But yeah, I don't, we, you know, Freeman's Garage, this is, this is not moving, so that's good. It's not how-to videos here at Freeman's Garage. These videos here are not for just people that work on cars. It's for anybody who wants to hang out and just enjoy enjoy, I don't know, the beautiful world? I don't know. You know what I'm saying. There's no stress here at Freeman's Garage. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's coming out. Probably shouldn't do that because if it pops out, it's going to break the camera lens. You can see how far down that is. And again, once we get through this first one, we'll move, we'll move faster. You gotta watch the eyeballs on this stuff. Well, we're gonna break out the big boy anyways, cause we need a hole to 
push these guts out through. And I just want to point out that it's never going to go this easy on everything, right? Because this is a very, very solid, rust-free, There's, of course there's a little bit of rust, but it's a very solid, very minimal rust Texas car. Pretty dry car, if you know what I mean. So, if you were, why didn't they go that far? If you were doing this on a Rambler that you dug out of the woods in, I don't know, Massachusetts maybe, things may not be as rust free as they are for you and me right here, right now. Okay. The goal here is to just push this out without damaging anything. Okay. Crescent wrench. Big one. I couldn't find the big one. We'll go with the medium one. And we know from experience that, well, I don't want these parts to fly everywhere because they're going to go back into nooks and crannies So I'm going to have to crawl around to get into. Okay. That feels like it's coming apart. There we go. I think that's it. Yeah, it's almost all the way out. I don't think we're uh, we're popping here though. I don't think we're exploding. I like doing this. Rebuilding wheel cylinders is cool. Wow. These are clean. No, I mean right here anyways. Let's get go. Forgot, there's still a loaded spring in here. Looking real clean so far, and here's the bottom of our piston, and it says 15 sixteenths. That's the size of this bore, just under an inch. But yeah, could you imagine if you lost an eye this way? E even the doctor would probably say, Why were you trying to rebuild the original, or at least 50-year-old wheel cylinders? Why didn't you just buy new ones? They're like $12. And then when you start going into about how well you're trying to save the country... <laughs> yeah, no one wants to hear that. Actually, I think wheel cylinders for this car if you bought new are about 22-ish something like that okay no we got quite a bit of gunk but there's the spring and there's the seal and check out the gunkage that's some sewer pipe action going on there Yeah, it's a good thing we. It's a good thing we're doing this. We gotta get that other piston out. Actually, I want to get some of this out. That's a little metal piece that goes with the seal. I want to get some of this gunk out because we're gonna be pushing that piston, which is down about to there, we got to push it out the rest of the way and why scrape all this nasty, hard, gunky chunks through the cylinder and probably scratch up the bore. So let's wipe this stuff out and spray some fresh lube in there. Don't be shy on the lube. Just use it up. Yeah. Okay, well, we've ran out of real estate. Let's get a 
socket put down in here. It just it just can't be a metric socket. You know what I mean? It has to be a standard socket. Okay, hopefully all this goes well. What? Okay. Oh. Oh. I thought the socket wasn't long enough. But it was. I was going to get a deep well. Nice. Well, that's cool. Now we clean. We hone. We'll be using the drill for this. And then we clean again. And then we assemble with the proper kit. We're going to clean the outside. And we're going to clean the bore. Which you can see in there is some of that's just filth. And some of that could be scratches. But we're going to make it a nice, clean, fresh surface. There we go. You can probably see, see better now. We're going to make a nice, clean surface with fresh cross hatching and there's two holes in here one hole well let me back up this is where that's a bolt hole that's a bolt hole for the two bolts that we took out this hole right here is where our bleeder screw goes into and this hole right here is where our brake line attaches to with a fitting and you can see the holes in there it's just little tiny holes passages we need to make sure that's all perfectly clean so let's get all this stuff out of our way get this cleaning done clean home and clean clean home clean because I want to hurry up and I want to move on to the next one what am I doing here? The pistons have a little bit of scoring up and down on them, but that is nothing that we're going to worry about. It's very light, and that's normal, and that's kind of what the, uh, the rubber seal is going to take care of. That's going to be behind it. And this is a cast steel piston. Sometimes you go into wheel cylinders and you find cast aluminum pistons. This is steel. If you put a magnet to it, it would stick. It's not going to stick to the aluminum. Well, that piston's good to go. We'll just make sure we give it a final wipe down before we insert it into our... Oh, that flying thing into our fresh cleaned and honed wheel cylinder because just in case some debris lands on it or something. So now they're good, now they're good piston. Happy to see that. I'm using a soft bristled brush here. No need to go with anything heavy duty. That's how much it cleaned up inside with the rag and some cleaner. Jeez, it's a loud air conditioner. So that is the before. And now, let's hone it and see what the after looks like. All right, it's time for me to put gloves on. Go ahead and call me a chicken if you want. It's fine. Free country. But I will be handling food after this that people other than myself will consume. And this is kind of where I draw the line. <laughs> well, like this is any better. But, you know, you know the whole thing about how, you know, we don't need gloves, right? But at the same time, I'm just cleaning these stones off. At the same time, come on. You really think that we should be letting this stuff 
soak into our bloodstream. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Lube up the cylinders like, or cylinder. Just lube up the wheel cylinder like so. The bore. Get some on the stones. The rolling stones. I'm gonna go at a medium speed, back and forth for yeah, maybe 30 seconds to begin with. Well, just till it feels right. I'm gonna try not to go all the way out on the other side. See, that's what you don't want to do. Not only do you waste time, but you look like a like a dingbat. I don't like to come out so far that the stones go like that. Because I, I just feel like it'll make an uneven end if that makes any sense. Alright, let's see what we're working with here. Spray it out, wipe it out. Just, just get it out, get all the dirty brake fluid out from our honing. And, uh, yeah, I don't like that crosshatch. It's a little, uh, I think I, I, think I need to move a little bit faster. So I'm just going to put a little bit better crosshatch. Well, here I'll show you. Hopefully you can see that crosshatch. It's a little too tight of a crosshatch for me. I want to space it out a little bit more. Maybe move a little bit faster. You know a song I just got playing in my head? La la bum ba. Go, go from the other side too, you know, let's do that. Let's, let's swap it around and go from the other side, you know, just to even out our mistakes. Oh! Reverse. Okay. I got a little rambunctious there, a little unprofessional. But yeah, that's the after. Just need to clean our bleeder screw here. And, and then we're breaking open a kit and assembling. And then we'll put it back on the car and then we'll have one done. And then Blitzkrieg through the passenger side. And then we get the fun of the front of the car being a little bit different and with the wheel bearings and that interesting thing that I'm going to tell you about. I'm using a piece of welding wire to get in there, clean out this little passageway. Here's a kit for the rear. And that, open it up. Dip it out onto this clean towel. Jeez, I thought that seal was gonna head for the floor. I was thinking about reusing the old outer seals because they say made in USA on the outside of them. They actually say it on there. But they're a little cracked. So that'll they'll go in the Memento coffee cans for this project. We'll use our new ones here. So we got our, all our parts here, so we will do... Oh, that is smooth. 
smooth as baby's new butt. There's a teeny little bit of pitting still in there, but it's in the middle where the pistons do not ride. So we're going to have the spring in the middle, and then we're going to have our pistons like that. And then we're going to have our seals, not the swimming kind. Our seals go like that. And then these go on the end. And we're going to lube all this up with uh, brake fluid when we put it together. The trick is just not, is when you get the spring compressed, just don't let things fly around all over the place. Now something that our kit here doesn't have, that the old ones have, is this piece here that goes on the inside of the cups, which I've debated about this many times because this is common. It's just normal where usually you see these in real wheel cylinders and then in your new rebuild kits you don't but the thing is is it's not gonna fit you know you could you could use this oh just stick it on here so you could probably use that but see that there's that hole and then this little nub in here And that fits in there better. It's pr probably best just to uh, leave it alone. Don't try to use that in here. You never know, maybe this rubber and the new kits are just made different where you don't need that metal piece in there to keep the spring from digging into the rubber maybe. I don't know. But let's take some compressed air and let's spray all this off just to Make sure we don't have any dust that just got in there or any, you know, powdery just debris from the box, just from shelf wear and sitting. I will don a new set of gloves. That way we can make sure that we don't contaminate the inside of this. And you know, I gotta say, after seeing how nice the old seals are and everything you know I, I'm very tempted to just just stick the original pieces back in you know and have just done a cleaning but I don't know what, what did you hate to do all this work and put everything back together and and then find out that brake fluid leaks past the old seals, you know, might, might, might as well just rebuild them. And as we know, the, the kits are cheap, so. The wheel cylinder is lubed, so we'll go ahead and put in our first seal. We're going to put it in backwards because we're going to push it towards the other end. Just kind of how it goes because of the the curve the seal has on it. You gotta kind of push it in backwards. Now we'll lube up a piston. Put that in there like that. And don't worry about getting or we're not we're not worried about getting brake fluid on the outside of this. In fact, you know we might as well just go ahead and just, just coat it right now. Just gonna keep it from rusting. Alright, so our piston and seal is down here, and now we're going to put our spring in. Why, why not lube the spring up? No reason to, but why not for craps and gigs, craps and giggles. Lube up the seal. See, in this one here, we're just going to force in. Without ruining it. Okay. 
Now we're going to lube up this piston. Not being shy about the lube. Okay, that's going in. And now we have a wheel cylinder, but we just need to put our boots on, which we'll go ahead and wipe the excess brake fluid off of here. I just kind of did the whole brake fluid on the outside thing just kind of for fun. Why not? Just to say I've done it. You can see that spring is pushing these out. Because it wants to get back on and get those... Oh, see? That's a good strong spring. And I'm getting the brake fluid on my hands, but oh well, whatever. We knew that was going to happen. But it wants to go back on and get put into... Get those push pins in. Now let's put our seals. Our new seals on on the outside. Oh yeah. Run it right around that that ridge. I'd say it's safe to say that we have officially rebuilt a 1975 or older EIS wheel cylinder. That's gonna work like a charm. That's gonna last it's gonna last for many many years. Well that's buttoned down. The brake line is just sitting inside the wheel cylinder loosely because the plan is to rebuild all the brake lines. As I was saying before and you know what, we don't need to wait to look at the other side. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. This needs to pop up into there. Let's get all the, I almost said Twizzlers and then I almost said Scissors. The uh, Scorpions and then Spiders and everything out of here and clean this up for maximum braking performance. If there's anything still living in here, it's coming out now. That might be a brown recluse. The only way to tell for sure is to put it under a magnifying glass or a microscope and check for three pairs of two eyes. Everything is a lot cleaner now and looks great. That's fantastic. Now let's spray some lubricant on this wheel adjuster so that in a future video here in Freeman's Garage very soon when we dial in our brakes to head out for our maiden voyage on a public roadway we don't have to deal with a rusty adjuster. Just gotta make sure to not get any on the brake shoes. That's cool. I just noticed that on this brake shoe it says Wagner. 
That's something you'll definitely see on a lot of a lot of old ramblers. So that's cool. It's a little tighter now that we put that spreader bar or parking brake strut, some may call it. After we put it in its right place. Okay. This is how these jobs on working on cars ends up turning into taking longer than you planned on and then you thought it would take. We need to loosen up this adjuster that we just had uh, sprayed some lube on because uh, yeah, we can't quite get it on now. So we gotta, it's a little bit wider so we gotta make it a little bit narrower. That's fine. We were gonna end up doing that anyways for the final, final brake drag adjustment. So, that actually just put us a step ahead. because this car has to roll out for another car to come in for a job before we're gonna be able to get to the rest of the brake system, the brake lines and the master cylinder and whatnot. dish back on. This corner is done, sir. <laughs> this side's worse. There's a lot more scorpions and all kinds of nasty stuff in here. I think that's a dead mouse or tarantula or something. I don't know. But look, the uh, spreader bar, or parking brake strut, is where we thought it was supposed to be. So that validates that. And let's take a look back here. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot dirtier back here too. Well, let's knock all that out, all this junk around our bolts and our brake line. I really don't know what this stuff is. Some sort of animal or insect puke pile, I suppose. And again, this drum is in great shape. So I'm going to go ahead and spray some lubricant on the fitting on the brake line behind the backing plate there and let that soak for just a second and then we'll start wrenching on it. And hopefully just like the driver's side, we do not uh, twist and break the steel brake line. 
So let's hope that doesn't happen. But yeah, let's get to it. Let's knock this side out. Well, something just caught my eye here like a shiny new penny. We didn't have a rod here on the driver's side, did we? Hooked into the outside groove here. It's attached to this bell crank here, which is part of our adjuster mechanism. After we complete this passenger side, we'll quickly just hop back over to the driver's side and just zip the uh, wheel and tire and drum off and peek just to see if it looks like there was a rod hooked up there or not. I'm not sure, but better safe than sorry. We'll throw a cotter pin in here too because you see this is a castle nut and that's a hole. <laughs> There's supposed to be one in here. There was on the driver's side, so we'll get one thrown in before we button everything up. You know, you don't want this nut coming off because in your wheel and tire combo, comes off and goes careening. Well, first it'll pass you, and then it will. you'll watch it go careening out of control down into the bottom of the ditch, and then up through the ditch on the oncoming traffic side, and whammo, right into the Brady Bunch's station wagon. And if there's one thing you don't want, it's the Brady clan on your bad side. Wow, that just shot powder <clears throat> dust everywhere. It's a good thing we're doing this once again. You know, I really was on the edge of just of just doing the master cylinder and fixing the broken line up at the master cylinder and then just pumping brake fluid through the system and trying to bleed it. Especially after how clean that one was on the left rear. Look at how bad that wheel cylinder is. It's just full of powder. You know Lon Chaney, the famous actor from the 20s and 30s? You know, Phantom of the Opera and the early horror films. He got all messed up from, I guess, breathing in this fake snow that they used while shooting a movie. Messed him up real bad. And it just made me think, this snowy powdery stuff here, I don't want that in my lungs. Well, we were just going to blitzkrieg through this, but, well, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. I don't know if we're going to be able to save this one or not. That's pretty bad. That piston might be seized in this wheel cylinder to a point where we can't get it out. Now, we've done some tough wheel cylinders here in Freeman's Garage, but, I don't know, that's pretty bad. We're really going to be running the risk of of either cracking this cast wheel cylinder or just damaging the the inside of the just damaging the bore beyond repair. It's going to be tough. Yeah, I don't know, my friend. If I knew this, I would have taken this off couple of days ago and brought it to this point and then pre-soaked it, I would have just dropped the entire wheel cylinder, submerged it in a can of some kind of oil, whatever I have on hand that I could fill a little container with, and completely submerge it. Wow, that might be the actual piston itself. Gone. Rotted, chipped, and gone. See that? Wow, that might be it. I think it is. That's not good. I've dug a bit deeper in here, and yeah, that's definitely a piece of the piston playing Houdini on us. <laughs> They're still saving that. Alrighty then. Typically, this is the telltale sign that you should just replace 
all four wheel cylinders with brand new units, ditching the rebuilding challenge. All right, we're ordering parts. So the thing to do is to stop goofing off the rear of the car, jack up the front, rip the wheel cylinders off, dig into them, see what they look like, see what we're working with, because if we're gonna place a parts order, we wanna get it in as soon as possible and we want everything we need on the same order. That way we minimize downtime, but of course there's the possibility that we're not even gonna be able to source what we need or all of it. It might be onesies, twosies, maybe more than one company. I don't know, but we need to figure it out quick and try to get stuff ordered. Close call. I had to go to Adapter Town and get creative to get one of these wheel cylinder bolts out. I'm just hoping it's I didn't snap it. Okay. No, nope, we're good. Good in the neighborhood. One more bolt and then wheel cylinders coming out. Oh, 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 oh yeah, <laughs> these are bad too. Yo, yeah, that's bad. Oh no, actually, that looks brand new. Let's just fill them full of fluid and go. I kid, I kid. Look at that beauty. Wow. That is neat to see. Where's my little poker thing? Ew. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it looks like some sand in there. It's kind of sandy or crystally. These front wheel cylinders are not 5 16 like the rear. They're larger, they are one and one ace. If you're looking at a parts catalog, you will probably see it as 1.125, which is one and one eighth converted to a disamel. This one is a Wagner made by Lockheed. So this could be an original to the car or a replacement that came maybe from the dealership or something. I don't know, I'm not really sure. I wasn't really around at that time. This piston on this end doesn't look too bad. And that one's not as good. This one, I bet you we could rebuild this one. 
It's very possible. Let's take a look at the condition of our wheel bearings real quick. American made Timkins. That's good. Very good. The wheel bearings and races look good. The bearings can be repacked and reused. They're high quality American made pieces. I'm sure they'll last for many more years. So let's rip the driver's side apart, see what we got going on there, and then I'll show you that neat thing that uh, I've been alluding to. I'm gonna throw that hub and drum back on, put the nut on, and then bolt the wheel and tire back on before we take the wheel and tire off the driver's side. Just because I am completely out of jack stands. With both front tires off, the car would just be teeter-tottering on the jack in the wood block. And if for some reason any of that gives way or fails, this Rambler's going to be laying on its nose. And this is only going to take me about 60 seconds to... Okay, 65 seconds. It's only going to take about 60 seconds to throw this back on here. There sure are a lot of snail shells attached to this brake drum. Okay, now it's going to take 70 seconds. Ricky Rudd would have fired me by now. Need a couple tight. The fitting over here on this side does not want to come break free from the line. The fitting in the line there stuck together. And so we're having to kind of try to twist the rubber hose to uh, get the two apart instead of the fitting. And of course we have, we're connected back here. Let me fix the light for you. And of course we're fixed back here to the wheel cylinder. It's just going to take a little bit of patience here. Okay, we're, cl we're close. We are close. Almost there. Oh, we should pretty much be there. Ah, there we go. And that, <laughs> and that's what happens to your hand when you do that. Wagner Lockheed on this one as well. What have we accomplished today so far? Well, we drew a little bit of blood. Um, oh yeah, didn't I, uh, wasn't I wearing gloves because I was going to be handling food <laughs> earlier? Well, I guess I'll scrub up as good as I can and then I'll wear gloves to handle the food. How, how about that? And this one, Condition-wise, or filth-wise, is the exact same as the passenger side front. It's very possibly rebuildable. Probably a 75% chance we could pull it off with this one. I'm back at the left rear. 
because I uh, realized that the other three corners all have those rods on that bell crank for the adjuster and so I just want to see if maybe your missing rod is hang laying in here somewhere but now I realize we're actually missing two or both of them you know what not just is there not two rods here remember one of them are they both hook into these holes and one of them goes up to here and the other one goes down to our little clicky clacky piece that is not here but it's on all the other wheels we just hopped over to the passenger side on the rear this piece right there that whole thing is missing now I couldn't imagine why all three corners have that exact same setup but the driver's side isn't supposed to that kind of doesn't make any sense since we got to order parts that gives me time to research that and figure out what we're gonna do about it all right here's that cool thing I was gonna show ya prepare for your mind to be blown well maybe not blown but intrigued this is AMC's deep coil ride which is essentially a strut and right here is a trunnion there's a bearing in here that the weight of the car rides on and it allows your wheels to turn left and right a car like this 56 Chevy here has more of a conventional type setup where you have an upper control arm and a lower control arm and then you've got an upper and lower ball joint that allows the spindle here to turn left and turn right and that's got your hub on it and your wheel bearings and your wheel and tire bolt onto that but coming back over to the Rambler and the trunnion the arrangement here is completely different and again all the weight of the car is sitting on that bearing or this trunnion and if you were to whack something really hard with the left or right front corner of this car you could fold that in <laughs> and and when they're worn out they're sloppy as can be there is a ball joint on the bottom as well but instead of a ball joint on top you got that got that trunnion the condition of our trunnions well that'll be determined on our first test drive well it looks like you're going to get an extra rambler video because we got to order parts and with things like wheel cylinders you know if you replace one you replace them all but the one that we did rebuild maybe we could keep that in a box in the trunk for a spare out on the road for fun, we could try to rebuild these on the Freeman's Garage Extra Channel or even just see if we can, if it's even possible to get the piston out of these and especially this really bad one. See if that's even something that can be done if it could look this bad and be rebuildable. That'd be kind of cool to experiment with that. Either way, these kits are good for tons of vehicles, even post the year 2000, which we wouldn't get involved with, but these are just always good to have around. It's just, they're just general sizes. And plus there's another Rambler sitting outside. So I'm sure we'll go through the same circus as, as this. So I'm gonna order parts. Who knows how long that's gonna take. When we get them in, we will wrap up this job. And then we get to move on to the master cylinder and the brake lines. And then that will complete the entire brake system on this car. Then we fix the transmission leak and then we test the push button flash-o-matic transmission and find out if it works. And that's it for all the big stuff and then this car is hitting the road for its test drive. First time on the road since 1975. Thanks for subscribing, sharing and watching the videos. I really do appreciate you and I'll see you very soon. Prepare for your mind to be blown.